Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to Hidden Gems. In this series I have a look at some of the older games that may have slipped us by or some of the not so old games that maybe didn't get the fanfare that they deserved when they were first released and because as such they again passed us by when they were released maybe in favour for that other AAA big game. Now this month's offering may put a few people's noses out of joint. I am talking about Metal Gear Survive. Now this isn't so much a hidden gem because it's hard to find. It was very easy to get hold of at the time. It's only been out for just over a year and is still available on the PlayStation Store. And I'm sure it's available to download for the Xbox One as well. And a quick search on the internet shows that there are plenty of copies available for purchase as well. Actual physical copies for no more than sort of £12-£13. And actually at the moment until the 15th of May you can get this on the PlayStation Store for only £7.99. Now I bought my copy when it was only a week or so old and it only set me back £20 even then. This is less than obviously we paid for Ground Zeroes when that first came out and that only has about an hour's worth of gameplay. While this is not a fully blown AAA game it has kept me well entertained for at least sort of 20 to 30 hours on my first playthrough and there are many bits and pieces to do once you have actually completed the main campaign. No, I feel this is very much hidden because people saw this and then that was followed with this in the first trailer. And because of this, people made an initial decision. And that's fine. It didn't look great from my perspective either. I wasn't wowed by this game. It certainly wasn't the Metal Gear game that I wanted. But I think that is most of the problem. If we remove the Metal Gear name from this game and just call it Survive for now and judge it as a standalone game in of itself, we can see this game in a much fairer light. It was the first thing Konami released post Kojima. It was the first thing they released with the Metal Gear name attached to it, other than a pachinko machine. And quite rightly, fans were not particularly happy. This wasn't the Metal Gear game they wanted. And as I have said, it's not particularly the Metal Gear game I wanted either. But what I did want is another opportunity to experience the Fox engine and to just see what the team that was left behind could do with essentially all the assets and bits and pieces made for them just to see what they could do and throw together. So what exactly is Metal Gear Survive? Well it is a pseudo historical event in between the Ground Zero's uh, prequel chapter and the Phantom Pain main game. You are just a random soldier that is left on Mother Base once Kaz Miller and Big Boss depart after the XOF attack. And after your kind of introductions as to your character and who your kind of main contact is at the beginning, you find yourself in this strange alien world inhabited by essentially zombie-esque characters. And this was kind of the main flaw that a lot of people had. Oh, they've just gone for a zombie game, which unfortunately, essentially it is, and they don't pose much of a threat or a challenge. But I'm just going to put this out there. The enemies in Phantom Pain didn't pose that much of a challenge either. And because of the open world nature of the game, it was very easy to bypass certain areas. And it really removed you from that stealth element that you got for the rest of the main series. Because you're funneled down a linear kind of area in the other games, it meant that you had to 
do your best to evade and take out the enemy whereas in phantom pain and again here in survive you could literally just run away and kind of deal with things in a very unstealthy manner now the story itself is kind of two-dimensional shall we say you are thrown into this alien world and you are tasked with rescuing survivors that are there and basically stopping an enemy that's the other side so that they don't come through into our world now i won't go too into detail as to the ins and outs of what happens throughout the main campaign because there are a couple of twists and turns on the way and although they're not as revolutionary or groundbreaking as some of the twists and turns we get in the main metal gear solid series they are pretty good for what they are and if i mention them here it does kind of spoil things going forward but needless to say you recruit a couple of other people that have been washed up in this area you build your home base and you essentially have to find a way of getting home and sealing off these kind of weird teleportation wormholes to stop the main big bad enemy coming through to earth as the name survive suggests not only do you have to kind of live in this area but you also have to survive in it and that includes resting that includes healing any injuries that you may sustain along the way and it also includes making sure that your thirst and your hunger are dealt with as well now there are plenty of places to pick up water there are plenty of places to kill enemies or pick fruit and vegetables and as your base develops you're able to kind of do them there as well other than just out in the wild i will say that the first time i played through this was a very annoying mechanic because i just kind of wanted to get on with each of the missions but it is worth saying that you need to make sure that you dedicate enough time early on to kind of stockpile as much food as possible and as much water as you can just to make things as easy for yourself as possible going forward. It can kind of slow you as you go but if you make sure to kind of mark these areas on the map as soon as you find them the first time when you're then caught a little bit short you can just return straight to these areas to replenish your stock levels and if you ever do come across an area full of water or plants or animals i highly suggest even if you don't necessarily need the items immediately it might be worth just taking five or ten minutes out of your mission time and just dealing with that there and then now if you have played ground zeros or phantom pain you will be very aware of how your characters move and how the gameplay is in general and that's pretty much what we see here in survive a couple of the buttons have kind of swapped around a bit and that takes a little bit of getting used to at the start but it doesn't by any means make it impossible to play as this is the fox engine you know as well what the game looks like however there are large chunks of it that because you are kind of enveloped in a mist it's very difficult for you to see what's around you and this is a little bit of a shame because the phantom pain did look quite nice the, the kind of landscapes that it gave you not so much very kind of close up but you don't get those kind of same landscape shots that you got before now the stealth that we had in the phantom pain was kind of minimal and unfortunately in survive it's pretty much non-existent most of the enemies you will find will kind of just attack at you and pretty much all you have to do is put up a few defenses and attack from a safe distance obviously it's a zombie-esque kind of game so they'll come at you in kind of big waves rather than just one or two that you have to tactically eliminate there are a few moments of that and if you can sneak up from behind and attack them with a knife or take them out with a bow and arrow or a pole then that is very much advised if you can but it's not the end of the world as I said earlier you will have kind of a home base area that you need to develop 
and this is out in the map in the middle of where you're kind of inhabiting so there's no more kind of helicopter rides or loading screen in order to get into that it's just there in the world and you just walk straight back into it there is even an opportunity later in the game to send some of your team members out into the map to gather resources very much in the same way that you were able to do so in Peace Walker and the Phantom Pain where you sent groups out to collect bits and pieces just to make your life a little bit easier and those that stay in the base you're able to kind of set them in different uh, departments like you did again in Peace Walker and the Phantom Pain and they will help to kind of run and develop your base. My one major gripe that I have is the fact that there are only really two bosses in the entire game. One you will face at the very end in kind of two sections and one a little bit before that. You kind of have to go about three quarters of the way through the entire game before you face a significant boss. And this was one of the issues with the Phantom Pain and it kind of took a backwards stance with survive. The other thing people have complained about is the fact that you have to spend enough in-game money to unlock another save slot and the easiest way of doing that is to actually purchase those coins with real world money. Yes, that is a pain, but please let me remind you that this wasn't even an option for the Phantom Pain. When I wanted to play through again without deleting my entire save file from the first time I played through, I had to make up a separate account in order to basically play on my PlayStation 4 as another user. And again, I've done that with Survive just so that I don't have to delete my first playthrough and I also don't have to buy another save slot. The other gripe people have is the fact that you have to play online with this, even if you're doing the kind of single player and not entertaining the co-op element of it. But again, very, very quick with Phantom Pain, they patched in the kind of two sets of currency where about 90% of your currency was kind of held in an online account. So you were constantly logged into the servers with that as well. I don't really see the difference here. Yes, it's a bit of a pain, but that's what it is, and that's how it was advertised to us. And to be honest, with the fact that a fair few people have kind of fallen away from the game, the servers run pretty easily. Obviously, this will be a problem once they shut the servers down completely, but that will probably not be happening for a few years at least. Other than this, I would say this is a very enjoyable game especially if you were a fan of the phantom pain and its mechanics it's very much worth your while getting to grips with the fox engine once again yes it's not a proper metal gear game but as i said at the top of this video if we just call this game survive and take it on its actual merits it's really not as bad as all the backlash that it received when everyone saw that initial trailer so there we go, they were my thoughts on what I consider the hidden gem of Metal Gear Survive. Yes, it's definitely not the best Metal Gear game in the world, but it definitely doesn't deserve all the backlash that it immediately garnered. If you have played the game, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If there are any other hidden gems you would like me to seek out, please also let me know in the comments. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like my content in general please consider giving my channel a subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly or Facebook at ThatBritishGuy86. Till next time I've been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.